May the gods watch over your battles, friend. Unless you're bringing me another round, you can just keep walking. I'm just trying to have a quiet drink here, all right? We don't get many people like you visiting Winterhold. Usually it's elves. My pa says elves are bad and not to trust them. Ranmere beg a drink from you yet? That's gold wasted, friend. He owes this tavern enough coin to burn it down, build it back up, then burn it down again just for laughs. He's had some troubles in his life, but I can't have him drinking here without at least paying back some of the coin he owes. Go right ahead. He just might be sober enough to listen to you. It's not much, but we get by. Very little money passes through Winterhold anymore. But if there's one thing you can count on, it's folks needing a drink now and then. You mean the inn or Winterhold? Suppose it's the same answer either way. Winterhold's fallen on hard times, to say the least. Most folk packed up and left years ago. A few of us are either too stubborn or too crazy to go, so we do our best to make a living. Well, isn't this a surprise? Until next time. How much of our money have you spent? Hey, Ranmir. Anything left, or is it all gone? If I wanted to get yelled at, I'd be home. Can't you leave me be? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I bothering you? Am I making your life more difficult? I do what's necessary so we can get by. Have to, since I can't count on my brother for anything. Wasn't by choice, I can tell you that. Options were in short supply. Branmir and I grew up here, and nearly any money I make, he drinks away. Without the coin to pack up and leave, I decided to take to trading. Very funny. I'm sure you've noticed that Winterhold isn't exactly overflowing with people. So I'll sell whatever I can. If it's worth putting a price on, you can bet I'll do it. I've been burned a few times, made a few bad deals. But mostly, I come out on top. Yeah, it was stupid of me. I shouldn't have believed the story and just refused the trade. But I didn't, and now I'm stuck with this worthless junk. Some line about this claw thing in Ingol Barrow. He said it was worth more than its weight in gold if I took it back there. Something about placing it back in Ingol's chamber, I don't know. What was I thinking? Even if it were true, I'm not setting foot in some ancient tomb filled with who knows what. I don't even care anymore. You want to check it out? Fine. I'll sell you the thing for 50 gold and then it's your problem. Fine, here you go. You get killed on account of this thing, it's not my fault. Got it? But I suppose if it does actually turn out to be worth something, let me know, will you? All right, then. Unless you're bringing me another round, you can just keep walking. I'm just trying to have a quiet drink here, all right? Who are you to say what I should do? I'll pay her back when I'm ready. 
You're right. What would my forefathers think if they knew I wasn't paying my debts? Tell her and I'll bring her the gold I owe. All right then. Just say the word if you need a drink or something to eat. We may not have as much to offer as White Run or Solitude, but we'll do what we can to make your stay a pleasant one. Thank you. He's not a bad man, just bad with his coins and his drink. My husband Dagger could tell you stories there. I have a couple of Ranmere's things that he traded to us back when he was still paying regularly. I say you've earned them. See ya. I've got your back. I am at your command. Lead on. If there's anything you need, just let me know. I'm afraid there's not much to be said. Pinterhold is hardly what it used to be. You can talk to Birna if you need to buy anything. He doesn't have much, but could certainly use the coin. And then there's our little inn. Most of the business we get is from folks here to visit the college. Though even that's dried up some. Here, take a look at this. Some of the Jarl's men came by and left this bounty letter. Well, not exactly. Listen, <coughs> we're friends, right? I wonder if I could ask a favor of you. It's about Ranmere. Don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with him being here all the time. He mostly keeps to himself, and so far he's been able to pay. I just hate to see what's happened to him. He hasn't always been like this, you know. Drunk, I mean. Oh, he was a different person. Happy, outgoing, like anyone who's in love. <clears throat> see, Ranmere was involved with a pretty young woman named Isabel Rolaine. The two of them were very happy together, I thought. One day, she just disappeared. Ranmere was convinced she'd run off with someone else, leaving him behind. He turned to drinking, and what's left of him is what you see here every day. I'm not sure. I hope that maybe if she could be found, if he had some sort of explanation, that maybe he could put himself back together. I'm in no position to go searching for her, but perhaps you could. That's right. College of Interval, just north of town. Hard to miss. Mm-hmm. Unless you're bringing me another round, you can just keep walking. I'm just trying to have a quiet drink here, all right? What? Don't you... Don't you say that name to me! Don't you dare. Ever. Until next time.
I've got your back. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Lead on. It may be dead now, but where did it come from? Until next time. Now here's a man I'm glad to see. Dagger's been talking at you, hasn't he? Gotten you roped into his little plan to fix Ranmir's life. I'll tell you what I told him. Stay out of it. It's none of your business. Those aren't folks you want to get tangled up with. You'll wind up getting yourself killed. Dagger shouldn't have said a word about it. I love the man, bless his heart. But he doesn't know the whole story. One night, Ranmir was in here like always, drinking himself to death. When I told him there was no more haunting brew, that he drank all of it, he got angry. He ranted at me. How I didn't know what he's been through. How Isabel broke his heart when she ran off with some thief named Vex. 
He said he'd even gone to Riften to try and find the bastard. I think maybe he was hoping they'd just kill him, and that'd be the end of it. Dagger never heard any of this, and I chose to keep it to myself. I'm only telling you so you don't get into trouble. Riften and thieves means trouble. Just leave it alone. No, there isn't, and I suggest you leave it at that. I don't want to see anyone get hurt over this. Until next time. Unless you're bringing me another round, you can just keep walking. Something I can help with, or do you just want to talk? Sorry, lad. I've got important things to do. We'll speak another time. I have work if you've got the backbone. Who's asking? Not him again. He came nosing around Riften a while back, making a lot of noise about me. He was persuaded to leave before he found me. Funny. I'd have thought she would have gone back to him by now. She came through a while ago, wanted to know where she could get her hands on something valuable. Anything, really. I told her it was a bad idea, that she wasn't cut out for what'd be necessary, but she wouldn't hear it. So, I gave her some advice, pointed her towards Hopsfall Cave, and that was that. Walking away without taking a job, it's like passing a bloated coin purse on a table. Sorry, lad. I've got important things to do. We'll speak another time.
Azura's wisdom to you, friend. Unless you're bringing me another round, you can just keep walking. I'm just trying to have a quiet drink here, all right? Unless it's gold for another round of drinks, I don't want to hear it. A what? Don't you go pulling my leg. Give it here. This... this is really from her, isn't it? Did she really run off and do this? For me? By the eight. She's dead, isn't she? And it's all my fault. I... I have some thinking to do. Thank you for this. The mages don't let us go in the college. They said it's not safe in there.
Los Azura has seen your coming, Traveler. It was not curiosity, but fate that has led you here. Azura has given me the gift of foresight. I had a vision of you walking up the steps to this altar long before you were born. You have been chosen to be her champion. I know it is unexpected, but do not worry. It will all unfold as she has predicted. You must go to a fortress, endangered by water, yet untouched by it. Inside, you will find an elven mage who can turn the brightest star as black as night. It is cryptic, I know, but Azura's signs are never wrong. I believe the fortress may refer to Winterhold. Ask if they know this elven enchanter.
She is the goddess of dawn and dusk. Azura sees into the twilight of the future and guides her followers through it. Yes, there were others at first, but Azura's visions tested everyone's faith. One by one, they left, afraid to know their own future. But I refuse to abandon the shrine. The visions are a gift. Azura warns me of tragedy, war, death. Before it happens, I won't leave her guidance. My people, the Dunmer, built it. We fled from Morrowind after Vardenfell erupted almost 200 years ago. Those of us who were faithful to Azura were given a vision that led us away from the island before the worst came. This shrine is our thanks to her, that none will forget that she watches over us all. Twilight, guide your path. My job is to serve the Jarl, not waste time talking to travelers. I don't deal with any college applicants these days, so don't bother asking. No. Gods no, not for years. I left Winterhold for some time, and returned to stay here at the inn. I still have research that keeps me busy, and being here in Winterhold ensures I have access to former colleagues. Who sent you? Was it the college? The Jarl? We agreed there would be no more questions. <clears throat> You're working with the Daedra? Right. Now tell me the one about the Argonian maid and the lusty baron. A few coins for my soul. If only you understood the irony. What do you know about soul gems? They are, except the gem is always consumed. They're frail, except for one. Azura's Star, a Daedric artifact that allows any number of souls to pass through it. Some of us wanted to find out how. I was working under Malin Varan then. If only we knew what he was really planning. Malin wanted to alter the star. He was dying, disease. He thought he could store his own soul inside become immortal. It drove him mad. Students started dying. Eventually, the college exiled him. He took a few loyal disciples to Illinolta's Deep and vanished. Look, I don't care who asked you to find the star, but don't take it back to Azura. The Daedra are evil. They're the reason Malin went insane. Azora is no ordinary Daedra. She commands an entire realm inside of Oblivion. The more Malin worked on the star, the more she was able to damn him. It started slowly at first. Malin would see things that weren't there. Then he would yell at students over words they hadn't said. 
Then one day I walked in and Malin had killed a student, and in a horrific moment of inspiration, he started using her soul for his work. The college would agree with you, but do you have any idea how many innocent lives were cut short just so Azura could have revenge? We're nothing to the Daedra. Pawns to move around, praise and punish as they see fit. I mentioned how the star is a soul gem, only it never gets depleted. There's another rule the artifact follows. You can only store white souls in the star belonging to the lesser creatures. Azura's magic won't allow black souls to enter it. As a mortal, Malin's soul was black, so part of his work was breaking past Azura's rules. He was close before... Well, I already told you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>